this video is a quick follow-up to my Don't Filter Sine Waves video, taking a bit more into wave folding. I'm gonna do my best to keep myself brief here, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. So I mentioned wave folding super fast in the last video, and then I just sort of moved on and did a ring modulation. And I found out later that wave folding is actually super easy to do in Reactor, so I just quickly wanted to go over that. Wave folding is distortion of a waveform where when the amplitude exceeds a threshold, goes over a given threshold that we provide it, it becomes inverted. So usually if we exceed an amplitude threshold in digital systems, we end up with digital clipping. That waveform just totally gets cut off at any point that it would go beyond what we can represent. So with wave folding, instead of doing that, we fold it back over. And this introduces some harmonics. And so it can be a very musical way to work with sound and synthesis. Now, of course, you're introducing harmonics when you're doing clipping too. And at some point I'm gonna do a video on clipping and how we can use it expressively. But let's look at this for today. Now, once again, our goal with wave folding, as opposed to a filter, is to add more frequencies to a sound. So this distortion is great to apply to sine waves. <laughs> I'll show later on how it's actually not that great to apply to pulse waves, but sine waves, triangle waves, we'll show how this is a way to introduce some harmonics. Historically, this was a part of West Coast synthesis. I, I try to avoid those terms because I think students can get caught up in, oh, I wanna do East Coast synthesis, I wanna do West Coast synthesis. Whereas again, these are historical terms, everybody's doing everything now but it can be useful just to understand what they are. So again, East Coast synthesis being what I was talking about with the basic synth video, having a complex waveform and then filtering it out, then using an amplifier with an envelope or something like that. Again, subtractive synthesis. This wave folding that we're doing isn't really modulation synthesis. It isn't really additive synthesis. Again, it's a kind of distortion synthesis. So what I'm starting with here is just a sine wave oscillator similar to in the last video. If you need any help putting this together, I would recommend just checking that out. I don't have my audio smoother that I had in here, and I just want to change a little thing about this. I'm going to add a multiply here first. I'm going to take the output, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an envelope today instead of doing that audio smoother. And so I'm just going to do a simple AR envelope. Once again, I don't want to get too caught up in the envelope aspect, gate is gonna trigger it, and I'm not even gonna create controls, I'm just gonna create constants, and then I just need the sine wave to be a constant too. Okay, so now let me play. Okay, so this is pretty similar to what we achieved with the audio smoother before the gate in the last video, but this is a more traditional way to get rid of those pops on the sine wave. Once again, you can feel free to add a more sophisticated envelope, but I wanna keep our focus on what we're doing for today. Now, let's build a macro, new macro, and let's call it wave folder. Go inside the macro, in, out. So this is gonna be a modifier, right? We're gonna modify that sine wave, so it needs to take it in and run it to out. And so of course, now when I play, Nothing is plugged in there. So this wave folder is super easy. Built-in module, audio modifier, mirror two levels. Run the in into that and the out to that. And let's just create controls for this max and min. Okay. So remember what our wave folder is going to do is it inverts around a threshold. So let me play my sign. No changes yet, but let's bring up this minimum. Bring down the maximum. So now you can see, let's just do one side for now. So bring the minimum back to negative one, the maximum back, all the way up, back to our sine wave. As I bring down that maximum, we can see how that waveform gets folded over, and we can hear those new harmonics coming in. That's pretty neat. Okay, 
So let's think about a couple things. One thing that we can do here is we can add a gain control. So I'm going to add another multiply here. And so what this is going to do is this is going to be the gain before it gets folded. So I'm just going to create a control for this. And then I want to go over to here. Let's set the max to be three, five might even be better. Let's set the default to be one. Uh, and that's fine for the step size. I might even 0.1. It doesn't really matter, but okay. So now let's just reflect that maximum. Move this mult up there. And let's rename this gain. Okay. So now I'll lock it down. So now I can take that waveform that's going in and fold it over. I wonder if I can help with that popping a little bit by moving up my control rate. It's a little bit better. Not much. Maybe I was better off with 0.01 there. Right, so by increasing the gain of that sine wave, I'm making it, well, it would normally clip, but instead I'm folding it over. Another common thing that we do with wave folders is we have an offset, or I guess it's sometimes called symmetry. So let's add a control there. And we'll just call this one offset. Okay, and now let's once again clean up our panel. Lock it down, still at negative one one. Let's set our gain back to one. But so now I can have my offset at zero and then see how it just pushes the waveform up or pulls it down there. And so I can offset it to create different shapes. So this is pretty great. Let's look at this. If I crank up the gain and bring the max way down, if you see those yellow lines out there on my scope, it means I'm clipping. So what's happened is I folded it over and then that part that's gotten folded is going over what I can represent flipped around. So if I wanted to fold it again, I'm just going to go here and go Command D. I'm going to do it twice, Command D. Here's my max and min controls. This out goes to this in. This out goes to this in. And this out goes to the output. So now I have them wired up in series. Now, there's probably a much better way to do this, but in Reactor Primary, I think this is, this is a pretty good solution. So let's go back to our defaults. We'll set this back to one. Close enough. Crank it up. There's that first fold. Let me play a lower note, actually. Let's fold it over. And now if we raise this min, we can make it fold again. Lower the max, make it fold again. Oh, well, I can still make it clip, but you know what I could do? <laughs> I could just go Command D. Output of this one goes into that one, and then the output of here goes to here, right? So now I have one, two, three, yep, four, five, six of these in sequence. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of great timbres in there. Okay, what I might want is one more multiply at the end here as a sort of makeup gain, right? So we can see, actually, let me, I'm just gonna bypass that for a second. We can see that if I bring this min and max down, that waveform isn't as loud as it used to be. It doesn't have the amplitude. So I can just create a control here. And out there, so let's call 
call this make up. Go to its info. Let's set its max to be, I don't know, three for that one as well. Min on that was probably going to be one, though who knows. Uh, default one. Okay, and let's move it somewhere nice. So again, when those white lines come up, that's showing me that's clipping on the scope. So once again, we're taking this sine wave, this simple waveform, and adding more harmonics. Okay, let's replace this just real quick with a triangle oscillator bink. I know I've got some serious settings going on there. We'll turn it all down. Okay, here we go. Okay, that's that's pretty neat. Let's now put in a pulse wave. I'm not going to worry about the pulse width at the moment. Ah. Definitely not as exciting, and, and I think you can probably see why, right? Because this is already a square, so it doesn't have that nice curve that makes any sense to fold over. There's a, a little bit in there because the pulse wave in reactor is not a perfect, like, right angle as a waveform. The reason for that is to try to prevent aliasing, so that's a good thing. But we get a little bit of a fizz. All right, just for the sake of completeness, Let's do our sawtooth oscillator. So that's doing something, but that's nowhere near as exciting as our sine oscillator. Or the triangle, for that matter. Whoops. To go from something that's completely simple... that's really harmonically rich like that is good fun. So once again, we're using this distortion to make a simple waveform more complex, far more effective than trying to filter your sine waves, since originally they're only made up of a single frequency. There's lots more to expand on this. You could run an LFO to any one of these controls, you could modulate it, and then you'd have something that is dynamically changing the harmonic of your waveform over time. Give it a shot, let me know what you come up with.